The Škoda 105, Škoda 120 and Škoda 125 were three variations of a rear engine, rear-wheel drive small family car that was produced by Czechoslovakian car manufacturer AZNP in Milada Bolslav, Czechoslovakia between 1976 and 1990. Engine sizes were 1.05 and 1.2 liters respectively. The range was facelifted in 1984 with a revised design and engine improvements, together with the introduction of a new 1.3-liter version known as the Škoda 130. The related models followed in 1987 with the Škoda 130,135,136. All 105,120,125 and 130 models known by their Škoda internal reference as Type 742, and the later 135 and 136 models as Type 746. In the UK, the 105,120 models were known as the Super Estelle until 1984, when the facelifted models were called Estelle 2. In the early 1970s, Škoda had originally intended to produce their successor to the S100-110 as a front-engine front-wheel drive model. However, because of the lack of funding, Škoda had even applied for license in Moscow to produce their new car with a front-engine and front-wheel drive. Škoda was refused the license and was forced to update the earlier S100-110 saloon models. The main reason Škoda was not granted a license to produce their new car was because it could have been more modern than cars from the Soviet Union. At that time, most cars from the Soviet Union had either a front engine driving the rear wheels or a rear engine driving the rear wheels. There was even a front engine front wheel drive Škoda 105120 prototype, which looked almost identical to the rear engine one. The Škoda 105120 went into production in August 1976. Despite being basically the same as the previous S100-110 under the skin, the new cars featured a lot of improvements, such as a front-mounted radiator with a thermostatic fan. The heating unit was now inside the dashboard, and the fuel tank was now underneath the rear seat. All models had much the same mechanical specification as the previous models, with a four-speed gearbox, independent suspension at the front, worm and drive steering, and swing axle rear suspension. An interesting feature found on the 105,120 was the side hinged bonnet, which opened up like the top of a concert piano. The Škoda 105,120 was initially available in three model forms with a choice of two engines. The 105S and 105L were powered by the 1,046 cubic centimeters, 44 brake horsepower, 33 kilowatt, 45 PS engine while the 120L was powered by the 1,174 cubic centimeters, 49 brake horsepower, 37 kilowatt, 50 PS engine. The 120LS and 120GLS models, which had the more powerful 1,174 cubic centimeters, 54 brake horsepower, 40 kilowatt, 55 PS engine and higher levels of equipment, joined the lineup in 1977 and 1978 respectively. Until 1979, both 105 and 120 were equipped with 14-inch wheels, with 155 State Route 14 tires, just like its predecessors, S100 and 1000 megabytes. but since 1979, due to an increased gauge, both models were given 13 inches wheels with 165 State Route 13 tires for 105 SLGL and 120 LLS versions, and GLS versions were equipped with 17570R13. This update was made in order to improve road handling, stability, performances and fuel consumption. The cars were initially criticized for unpredictable handling, at the limit, but it is unlikely that most motorists would notice anything untoward under normal conditions. The cars continued to win their class with monotonous regularity on international rallies, and were increasingly popular with budget-conscious motorists across Europe. The location of the radiator at the front of the car had the advantage of cooling the engine much more efficiently on the motorway. However, because it was much more complex than in the earlier models, the cooling system was very prone to airlocks, which often led to overheating and even head gasket failure. The existing 105,120 lineup was joined with the 120 LS in 1977. It had a more powerful 54 brake horsepower version of the 1174 cubic centimeters engine from the 120L as well as a higher equipment level. April 1978 saw the arrival of the top spec 120 GLS as well as the 120 standard model. In March 1981, the 105 gigaliters was added to the lineup.
It was mechanically identical to the existing 105S and 105L models only it featured the equipment specification of the 120 GLS model. Both the 105 Gigaliters and the 120 GLS were given black bumpers and horizontal taillights. In November 1981, the range was supplemented by an attractive Skoda Guard Coupe, which was equipped with the 1,174 cubic centimeters, 54 brake horsepower, 40 kilowatt, 55 PS, engine from the 120 LS and 120 GLS saloon models. This had much improved semi-trailing arm rear suspension, and paved the way for the 130 to 136 models of the late 1980s. The later Coupe Skoda Rapid was a facelifted version of Skoda Guard. In November 1982, the 105 SP and 120 LA were added to the range. The 105 SP essentially a commercial version of the 105 S, having no rear seats and no glass just solid metal in the rear doors, it was only available in Czechoslovakia, sometimes used for postal delivery. The 120 LA was identical to the 120 L but with a modified top gear ratio to improve fuel economy. Hence, E, for economic, the Škoda 130 models followed in 1984 and introduced many improvements into the existing 105,120 range. The very first Škoda 130 models were introduced in August 1984, shortly after the earlier Škoda 105,120 models were given a mild revamp. Developed from the earlier Škoda 105,120 models, some of which continued, alongside the Škoda 130 models, in production, like the 105S, 105L, 120L, 120 Gigaliters, 120LS, 120LX and 120GLS. The 130 series used a new 1,289 cubic centimeters engine, which produced 58 brake horsepower, 43 kilowatt, 59 PS, and which was just an enlarged version of the 1174 cubic centimeters engine used in the 120 series. This 1,289 cubic centimeters engine also saw use in the car's successor, the Škoda Favorite. In addition, the rear suspension was now redesigned to a semi-trailing arm layout, and the track of the car was widened to 55 inches, 1395 millimeters. Five-speed gearboxes and four-pot front brake disc calipers were other updates. The new models countered the earlier criticism that had been made in some quarters of tail-happy handling with the prominent UK motoring magazine, Autocar and Motor, remarking in 1988 that the new 136 Rapid model handles like a Porsche 911. In 1987, with the introduction of the new Škoda Favorite, the Škoda 105120 series was trimmed to just the 105L, 105SP, 120L and 120 gigaliters. The 125L, which was identical to the 120L but with a 5-speed gearbox, was added in October 1988 and was the final model to evolve from the 105,120 series. From 1989 onward, production of the 105,120 series was gradually wound down as production of the Škoda Favorite progressed. Production of the 105 SP had ended in July 1988, followed by the 105L and 120 gigaliters in January and November 1989. The 120L and 125L, the last remaining models of the 120,125 series, were finally discontinued in January 1990. After a production run of 14 years, which included a total of 1,961,295 cars, counting just the Škoda 105,120,125 series cars alone, production of the 120L and 125L, the last remaining models of the Škoda 120,125 series, ended in January 1990. On October 5, 2004, a survey conducted by AUTOSALON revealed that among the 3,706,012 cars registered in the Czech Republic, 1,780,124 were Škodas. At 305,726 cars, the Škoda 120 was the largest model represented, while there were 216,857 Škoda 105 cars, which made that model the fourth most common Škoda car. In the UK, the Škoda 105,120 range was sold under the name Škoda Estelle, a name created by Alan Blavins of Škoda GV's then-advertising agency, Childs Green, who were based a few blocks away from Škoda's office and showroom in Clerkenwell, London. 
The screen-printed anodized aluminium front grille Estelle badges were designed by Alan Blavins and sourced by Jim Hubbard of Child's Green for Škoda. The Estelle proved popular with 120,105 cars finding homes between May 1977 and March 1990. In 1987 alone, which was three years short of the end of the car's production run, UK Škoda dealers managed to sell 17,000 rear-engine Škodas including the Rapid Coupe despite the car's negative image, individual handling and outdated technology and serious problems with the head gasket condition. Its main selling points were its spacious interior, dependability, ease of maintenance and low asking price. Reliability was often a strong point with these cars, some of which have reached over the 100,000 mile, 160,000 kilometers, point and are still running to the present day due to good maintenance. Škoda made great play in its advertising of its consistent class wins in the RAC rallies in the 1970s and 80s with the Estelle. In August 2006, an Auto Express survey revealed that just 612 Škoda Estelles sold in Britain were still registered with the DVLA, which officially made it the fifth most scrapped car in Britain sold in the last 30 years. Although it can be argued that much of this reduction in numbers could be attributed to mass re-exportation of the vehicles back to Eastern Europe, as was also the case with contemporary Lada vehicles of the same era, where they were worth much more, as opposed to scrappage. The four cars with a higher rate for scrappings had all finished production at least four years before the Estelle. With the Škoda Estelle being the last mass-produced rear-engine small family car in Europe, not to mention the fact it is becoming increasingly rare in the UK, prices for good examples are rising. The 105 and the 120 sold well in Finland in the late 1970s. During the 1980s Škoda's sales in Finland took a small plummet but nothing of concern. The 105 and the 120 were imported with no tweaks except some extra options to help them get through Finland's snowy roads more easily. Sales of the Škoda 105120 range in Greece were strong though it was never able to match the success of established Western European and Japanese models. Its main selling points were its low price, ease of maintenance and spacious interior. The low price was a particular consideration during the recession of the late 1970s and early 1980s. They had a good reputation for being rugged and robust vehicles and they were considered by some drivers as, the real cars, for all possible uses and needs. The 120 standard model was never imported in Greece. After the Škoda 105,120 models were given a mild revamp in early 1984, the whole 105,120,130 range was sold under the name Škoda Target. By the early 1990s, it was obvious more than ever that the rear-engined range had already become a far cry from the needs of the Greek drivers. As a result, the Škoda 105,120 and 130,135,136 models rapidly disappeared from Greek roads. Since the 2000s, they became a non-existent kind on Greek roads. The Škoda 105,120 was imported into New Zealand in the late 1970s and proved to be an affordable, popular and robust, no frills, vehicle, comparing well against equivalent British imports. There was a political scandal though in the early 1980s when it was falsely reported that a batch of imported Škodas were made with Czech prison labor. Such imports are forbidden under New Zealand law. But imports were allowed to continue when it was determined that the importer knew nothing about this aspect of the vehicle's construction. The car also got a political reputation at the general election in 1984, when a defeated National Party MP, Pat Hunt, derisively referred to his social credit party opponent, Neil Morrison, who won the seat as a member of the Crimpling Suit and Škoda Brigade. The Škoda 120L was sold in Australia during the late 1970s and early 1980s though sales suffered from laws that limited numbers imported annually due to their being manufactured in Czechoslovakia which was a communist state. Despite this the 120L received a positive response from the motoring press who acknowledged it as offering good value for money. This was the last Škoda model sold in Australia until the 2007 launch of the Škoda Octavia and Škoda Roomster. It is estimated that approximately 21 Škoda 120L survive in Australia. In Iceland the Škoda 105 S and L were sold, in some numbers. The 120 was imported between 1977 to 1989, although some were registered in 1990. Around 7 Škodas in total are licensed in Iceland, most of them the 120, then 130 and only one 105. Over 30 Škodas are left in total, 